many of our pastors and leaders have been studying. How many know that in ministry you continue to study? You're always learning. And so we have Dr. Steve Anderson here from Transworld Accreditation Commission and um, also representing School of Bible Theology. Now, his father founded School of Bible Theology many, many years ago. It was one of the first online theological schools. And when all the universities were poo-pooing the idea of online education, now you can go to any of the main line universities, Oxford, Cambridge, Princeton, Yale, and do online courses. Pretty amazing, isn't it? So his dad was ahead of the curve. And today he's here with Dr. Monroe, and I want them to come up here. Okay, okay, we'll wait for you. Come right up here. And there are several degrees that are earned, and they're going to be presented today. These are earned degrees. They're not honorary. These are earned degrees. And so I want Dr. Steve to come. Okay. So tell us a little bit about School of Bible Theology and, and your dad's whole concept of that and how long it's been in inception. Well, first of all, I want to say, like everybody else, congratulations on 35 marvelous years of uh, Pentecostal ministry. What a general of the faith. And uh, his wife and he have done a wonderful job, and we're so thrilled about Dr. Rodney and his work in education. And, uh, and so I think it was 92 when uh, Dad kind of connected with you in Lakeland. And my dad, first of all, let me just kind of go back. Uh, School of Bible Theology Seminary University has a prominent role here in the ministry because when Dr. Rodney came here, he had a quality that my dad and Dick Mills and Roy Hicks and all the generals of the faith really admired. He was under criticism for the joy and a lot of the manifestations that went on. And his way of countering that was having generals of the faith like Dr. Bob Nichols, uh, sign off on what he was doing. He said, look, I'm accountable. I want people to know that I have sound doctrine and that we're not just having a zoo and anything goes. And so he would have these men in the service to watch him, analyze his doctrine, and uh, even Dr. Oral Roberts and Dr. Kenneth Hagan Sr. And uh, he didn't, uh, Dr. Rodney didn't just get up and do anything he felt like doing. He would cover things that he had in his spirit and made sure, you know, because the Bible says the Word and the Spirit agree. And so he would run it by these men. A lot of younger ministers that come over, they just would pop off and come up with stuff out of the blue, and uh, that's why they would, you know, they'd, they'd be uh, uh, an overnight one-hit wonder, we call them. They'd have a big move of God here or there, and uh, it would even make TV and draw big crowds. But it had no longevity because it wasn't solidly based in doctrine. We even saw some uh, prophetic ministries, as they called themselves, that would even come into this area. And when there was error that was blatant going out even over different Christian networks, they would, these leaders would stand behind this nonsense. And here was Dr. Rodney warning them in tears. This is not biblically uh, sound doctrine. And they'd say, if you even criticize these men, be careful, it's blasphemy. But the Bible said we are to judge everything that is done and line it up with the Word of God. And that's been a strength that this man has had. And that's why there's been 35 years of lasting sound doctrine. Dr. Rodney hasn't believed in the rapture one year and then say, oh, well, no, we're going through the tribulation the next year. He's been solid. And that's what the great ministries have had in common. They got a foundation that was solid and certain and sure. Now, my dad started the school, just so you know a little bit, and I won't take a lot of time, no. but uh, I just, take your time. Uh, so, so you know about how the school started. My father had uh, his firstborn son that really should be in my place was named Rick Anderson, Richard Lauren Anderson. And uh, he worked for Allen Revivals, and he was a crusade director for him. And in the transition, when Dr. Allen died, he worked for Don Stewart. He was just brilliant. And at 28 years old, my brother went to a fight in Los Angeles, California. It was a notable boxing match of uh, Muhammad Ali and Ken Norton, September 
the 10th, 1973. Uh, he was staying at the same hotel. He met with Muhammad Ali, he was an avid sports fan, like you're a golf enthusiast. And uh, so we know that he got to meet Muhammad Ali that night and uh, had his autograph picture with him. And it was just a great celebration. It was a decision match there at the Forum in Los Angeles. And he checked in to that Marriott Hotel there by LAX. And when he went out to his car, he was driving a new 1973 Monte Carlo. That was the ride at the time. And he was dressed sharp because, you know, he was around A.A. A. Allen all the time. And, and they looked sharp, you know, they just dressed sharp. And, uh, but he was a target for a carjacker. And so uh, my brother, my dad's firstborn son, uh, was kidnapped, robbed, and murdered uh, that night, which it was after midnight, so it was 9-11-1973. This was devastating to my dad, to say the least. And uh, many ministries have a midnight hour. I know Dr. Nichols has had, Oral Roberts did, T.L. Osborne lost his own son. Uh, on the steps of the ministry in Tulsa, Oklahoma. But every ministry that has a midnight hour always has a dawning when the sun rises. It took my dad a year, but God gave him repentance. We never found out who killed my brother, uh, and it was probably for the best, but my dad was just eaten alive with grief and, and bitterness against murderers. But the book of Acts talks about repentance that comes from God that sets you free. And God gave him the heart to turn that bitterness into a creative work. And so in 1974, he said, you know, I've lost many son, my son and my firstborn son, but I'm going to raise up many sons in the faith. And uh, that's when he started School of Bible Theology Seminary and University. So it's important you know that story. He had a dawning. And he said, it's going to be degree granting because the degrees that are given began from God. The first Bible school ever created in the world ever was by God himself when he spoke to Moses to write the Pentateuch. Those five books are a well solid full diet curriculum that includes church history, civil ceremonial law. It includes uh, the order of faith. And everything we have in our faith that we believe was right there in the Pentateuch. And God called his man to do it. And in Deuteronomy 31, bring to me your doctors. Those are degreed men, not lawyers or medical doctors, but doctors of theology. And it was God's people that were instituting degrees. And so when the world came along, they took it from us. But we are taking it back. And that's what my father's vision was in 1974. Laughed at, articles written, called degree mills, accreditation mills, say what they want, just like they've made fun of the ministry and the joy of Dr. Rodney and Adonica. You press on, you push on, and before long people aren't laughing anymore, and it's changing the world, hallelujah. And that's what revival does, you push on and you pursue. and. Uh, that's what we've done in biblical education, and that's why we don't listen to what the newspapers and the big media say, and even the big universities that see us competitive. You know, they talk about consumer protection. Well, this is a degree mill. This is just the church doing this. There's not much to it. We need to protect the consumers from fraud. But you know what? When you go to a big university and they get your twenty to $50,000 in a student loan you can check out but never leave from, you can't discharge it in bankruptcy or anything. It's stuck with you for life. But in our schools, if you don't like it, you can leave any time you want. You don't have to stay and then just have a, a nice trip home. So that's how the consumer's protected. They don't have to stay. But you know what we're finding out? One year, two years, three years, they're at River Bible Institute. They stay on. They keep studying. Why? Anytime they can walk away because they are gathering what they need. They are having impartation given to them. That is changing their life. And the real measure of any institution on the globe is its placement record. 
What are you doing with the degree? Are you flipping burgers? Not that that's wrong to do, but if you've gone for a master's degree and that's all you're doing, something's wrong. That degree and that institution should send you someplace to do something in the field you've been trained to do. And that's what River Bible Institute and that's what School of Bible Theology Seminary and University has a track record of. We have leaders and evangelists and pastors around the globe that are with us. Tim Hall and uh, has his degree from us. Many great leaders that you know have been through the school. Dr. Bob Nichols and before dad went to heaven. We have just an alumni that is amazing and it's on our website and including Dr. Rodney's and Adonica Howard Brown. And so we come here today to honor the staff and not just honor them, but to confer upon them their earned degrees. These are not honorary, they've been earned. So and we want to call to this platform and uh, honor today uh, the different ones uh, that, that we are going to honor today no, you call, yeah, let's call them up together and then we'll Okay, go. Charles Allen Haas, will you come today? <laughs> Eric and Jennifer Gagnon, will you come? Derek and Cheryl Golding. Todd Edward Holmes, Raymond Arnaldus Sillier, so you want to present okay. Todd Edward Holmes, Doctor of Ministry earned. And those are doc doctor of ministry, yeah. Doctor of ministry. Where's that mic? Right here. Speak into the mic. <laughs> also celebrating over 30 years of ministry, Dr. Derek oh. Keith Golding. <laughs> and to his wife, Cheryl Ann Golding, his wife, doctor of ministry. This man on the end, Raymond Arnaldus Stilliers. And that's Master of Theology. Mm -hmm. And of course, the man in the middle, this wonderful youth leader, praise God, man of fire, Charles Allen Haas, Master of Theology. Praise God. Sure. Come, come all together and we get a pic picture here. Let's look at Christine. Look at the lady waving her hand. 